Hot rocks deep inside the earth send this steam shooting to the surface. It's piped to a power station here in Kenya to generate electricity. It's sustainable. It doesn't emit any carbon dioxide. And it's expanding. President Uhuru Kenyatta came to start construction of a new plant. More than half of Kenya's electricity is generated by renewable sources. We set ambitious targets for a quick transformation to renewable energy. And to be more specific, we as a country have committed ourselves to attain 100% green sufficiency by 2020. The power station's plaque is unveiled and the delegation drives off in a convoy of diesel fueled cars. Kenya's fossil fuel usage is increasing too. Every year, thousands more people buy cars and take to the roads. But like many African countries, the harmful carbon emissions here are tiny compared to those of the world's industrialized powers, in particular, the US and China. Kenya's not contributing much to global warming, and its green power programs aren't going to stop it either. This Air Force can only bear great fruits if also uh, other countries across the world are doing the same because what America does, what EU does, what China does affects uh, what happens in terms of uh, trying to uh, limit temperature rise. Some of Kenya's power may be green, but the energy sector is mired in corruption scandals. Electricity users pay a high price. About half the population can't afford it. Their main energy source is charcoal, made from felled trees, another contribution to growing carbon emissions. I would use electricity, but I can't afford it. I'm taking care of my grandchildren. But just one tin of charcoal is enough to cook for all of them. There are no easy answers, but geothermal power helps. And if the world's industrial powers embraced this kind of technology, climate crisis might be mitigated. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Nairobi, Kenya.